Ladies and gentlemen, this video will be described about the carving on the outer wall of the first gallery by Yuan Temple. We will proceed around the temple by clockwise, starting from the east doorway here to end at the mid doorway of the south gallery. Ladies and gentlemen, why not come along with us? The Bayuan Temple is undoubtedly as the second most iconic ancient monument in the world, just after Angkor Wat Temple. The basilisk on the outer wall of its gallery is divided into eight sections between the corner pavilion and the middle doorway but some parts are collapsed and some parts are not completely finished on either side of the gate there is a guardian called Dvirabala standing to protect the temple boldly but unfortunately they are missing head and arms by the treasure hunters the demon on the right side and the god on the left side we can identify them by the carving on the pillars just behind the statue on the pillars and on the walls are adorned with the celestial dancers Apsara showing the different magnificent styles of dancing on the lotus flowers very attractively interestingly on the pillar basis we have pictures of the muscular men performing the Khmer traditional mantis that had been used to protect the kingdom for centuries called Bokatao means the mantis that can slay the lions this bas relief is on the south wing of the east gallery measures for 78 meters long by 4 meters in height showing the procession of King Jayavarman VII coming back from the battlefield to the capital after he led the soldiers to revenge over the charm and the god triumph the charm had to control Angkor for 4 years from 1177 to 1181 and they had brought a lot of treasures and evacuated Khmer people to work in Champa country but in 1203 Champa was seized by Khmer soldiers and put under the control of Khmer Empire the King Jayavarman appointed a Cham prince named Ong Sarit to rule this new territory in what is now North Vietnam The hieroglyphs got three registers. The registers at the bottom, we can see the various Khmer factions from different regions and Chinese allies. Khmer soldiers have shot here, long elope, wearing a big necklace with animal teeth pendant. Some wearing launch clothes. Some have distinctive arrangement of rope or thick cord loop across the chest. Most of them just wear a dong and they walk barefoot. We can see they arm with spear, bow, arrows and holding a bronze shield in the hand. In the middle of the bottom register, the Chinese alliance wearing the tunics, having top knots and beard also joining the march. The register in the middle, we can see more Khmer soldiers ride on elephant and juniors ride on a horse. Each of them have parasols and pattern victorious flags. In front of the commander Vignettes 
obviously there is an emblem raised on a pole and the musician band playing triumphal music to emphasize his status and power. The details are reminiscent of the procession of King Suryavarman II in Angkor Wat Temple. The register on the top portrays about the royal family. The King Jayavarman seven riding on a huge horse. The galleries behind him holding parasols to shelter and fending for him. The birds are flying around, seem to welcome and concrete the victory of the Khmer soldiers returning to the kingdom. At the back, followed by the queen and concubines, laying on a hammock, serving by beautiful royal attendants. Undoubtedly, this picture is the actual activities in those days. We can see the oxen are struggling to drag the carts from the mud. The husband and his wife pushing from the back to transport foods and treasures home. A monkey stealing food from the basket on the lady head. Nearby behind, two soldiers discussing. The picture above, we can see the soldiers carrying the wooden cases of treasure. Three of them cutting up a deer to sear the venison to make foods. On the top, we can see the musician orchestra playing music with traditional instruments to entertain the queens. Remarkably, some soldiers look happy and cheerful because they got victory and treasures but some look sad and bleaky because they lost their friends or relatives. And some look tired from the long way walk. The last picture of the bus relief here, we can see the husband and his son posing the ox carts and his wife carrying a daughter on her waist, holding a weapon in her right hand and carrying a box on her head that looks so physically strong. Next, a broken cart, a lady cooking, a couple drinking rice wine from the flask. On the elephants, we can see three soldiers talking and one soldier picking up the fruits. At the bottom, we can see a lady pulling the tortoise that beating husband's hip out. Next, we can see the young man asking fruits from a pretty girl as the other two men hunting birds on the tree. Ladies and gentlemen, now we move to the next carving, but it is on the same wall, just interrupted by a door, and this carving arranged in reverse direction to the one in front. This is the story of the departure to war by the Khmer soldiers. At the bottom, we can see the Mahots transporting a lot of offerings and altars toward the ceremonial place. On the way, we can see the birds perching on the trees and corals eating berries. On the top is the palace scene. It's so fascinating. We can see the great priests, Brahmins, chanting rituals and doing offering to propitiate the gods and blessing the soldiers before the departure to war. The king and the queens watching the ceremony process from the throne. At the end of the middle register, the soldiers sacrificing a buffalo which was chosen from a certain area 
with brown color to satisfy the spirits. The picture at the last section of the same basket leaf comprises four panels. And the third top panel is the concubines family. They look so wealthy and highly respected. The servants at the back making foods and stirring butter. In the middle is Chinese merchant trading gold, peacock feathers and fabrics. At the bottom is the picture of a party in the temple. Some butchering pigs, some cooking foods and some drinking rice wine. And when they drunk, they sing and they dance. Nothing changed much from today. The picture on the topmost is the maternity hospital. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the southern east corner pavilion. The picture of worship to the civil gum in the temple. The temples when they were in use. Absolutely fantastic. They were gilded and covered in gold. Some parts inlaid with gemstones and they were hung with beautiful patterned curtains on the windows. That looked like a paradise. The lingway is in cross shape and the two ends from the galleries opened up to the landing stair that allowed the tourists can also access the temple from here. Originally, the galleries and pavilions had been roofed, but now it's open. The roof was collapsed by war. On the pillars are adorned with Apsara dance, and on the wall, we have different scenes of mundane, some finished and some not yet. Here is the musician orchestra playing music for the dancers, Apsara. Cross the gallery to the other side, the male lion statues standing majestically to guard the temple from the bad spirits who attempt to mess or persecute the gods. The scene of the Khmer fleets, the Queen Cross, and the scene of the King order his soldiers to bring foods and distribute for the victims at the rural area. The bas relief on the east wing of the South Gallery consists the length 70 meters and also portrays about daily life and battle between the Khmer and the Cham, especially when the Cham invaded Angkor in 1177. The first picture at the bottom, we can see the grandson is blowing fire to boil the traditional herbs to cure his sick grandmother. The parents preaching their kid, and there is a fish trap hanging to the rafter. Two women grilling fishes. In the cold season, they drink rice wine from the flask, and her husband bathing on an open fire to warm up. All the domes are roofed with clay tiles that is identifiable. It is a city. Above is the Khmer navies armed with spears riding on warships. At the top above, there is a contest between the qualified armies. The winner would become a commander. The king presiding in a decorated cabin with beautiful curtains and holding a dagger in his right hand to see the new commander. 
the next picture at the bottom. A hunter and his son are being hunted by tigers as they are hunting deer. And a tortoise creeping in the between. The female buffalo charging on a boy as her newborn baby suckling her breast. The picture in the center took place in 1177 at Tunle Sab Lake between the Khmer and the Cham fleets. We can see the Cham navies put on a helmet. They have angry face with beady eyes that look reminiscent of demons. And Khmer navies, they scalp down handsome with straight hair and long ear look, look like gods. The navies who fell down into the water got eaten by the hungry crocs. The carving on top above depicts about the land battle, but some parts are crumbled. The first picture, we can see the lady krilling fishes, steaming rice in a clay paneer, right hand holding a stick to warn her son not to go out for a walk, come to have meal together. That is a common custom, having meal with family. The picture next, the vendor living on sale, the rice noodle in the baskets, and his son crying at his mother wants to follow him. The last picture there, the kids flying a kite. The people in the village especially the vendors, were afraid of big tigers very much. They had to return home before the dark. There is a man got devoured by a huge tiger and the story was told by the old people to frighten the young kids not to go out at night. The picture here before the soldier fight, they tie the boat probes to each other. In the picture, we can see the battle is so fierce. There are many navies dying. The water in the lake turned red. And the crocodiles got fat. Finally, Khmer soldiers got defeated. And the charm occupied Angkor from 1177 to 1181. The picture at the bottom here apparently is a hospital. Here we can see our ancestors Khmer rowing and paddling the dragon boats, some armed with spear, some armed with bow and arrows, and shields to work to slay the enemies steadily and fearless. They had consecrated their fresh flesh and blood to protect the Khmer kingdom without hesitation and regretting. We move to the picture at the bottom again. We can see the people greeting the queen, the young woman giving birth in the maternity hospital. The next picture, the man shooting a crossbow and the antelopes. The picture at the bottom here is the market scene and the gambling on court fight. The next picture on top between the intervals is military training and the next top one is the celebration in the temple. At the most top is the palace scene but it seems not finished. The picture here, two beautiful sisters strolling the market with topless 
just wearing only a skirt. The Chinese naughty men talking about their beautiful body shape as the sisters buying some things for makeup. The rest the men selling the powder for them cannot control the scale. His hands are shuddering when he saw their chest. In the market, there is a tortoise creeping under a long chair. Wild boars fight. The Chinese tycoon visiting the lake and the fishermen casting the circle nets. We can see a lot of fishes and crocodiles in the water. The soldiers listening to their commander. They are training and trailing before they go to war. The picture on the topmost always carve the activities in the palace, but some parts are not yet finished. We can see the lady in waiting fanning for the queens. Sometimes the military got break. They got entertained by traditional music, dancing, and traditional games like chess. This is another battle. This battle, Khmer soldiers got victory. Probably it is the legendary of the Prince Jayavarthon, the future King Jayavarman VII. When the prince let the soldiers come out from the jungle to liberate the Angkor capital from the charm. So here we can see the Khmer armies kill the Cham armies. In the naval battle, the Cham navies also got the same fate as the armies on land. Here we can see the Cham soldiers running back out for a life to their country. The last picture here describes about the temple construction. These people are making foods, sweets, and rice wine for the constructors. Whereas the constructors, here we can see they have chisels, hammers, and axes in their hands to cut and carve the stones. These are skillful and ingenuous people then they would have a big inauguration party when they have complete the construction. I am Peng Suan, a tourist guy in Cambodia. Would like to thank you so much indeed for watching this video from the beginning to the end. And I would like to wish you all the best and hope to see you soon in my next video.